Hey everyone, this week's episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Quip and by DoorDash. Woo! Let's say you're a criminal. Imagine if you will. You're up to some very illegal stuff that could get you in some real trouble, either with the cops or other members of the criminal underground. Like losing a bunch of tons of cocaine in the harbor of Philadelphia. You're gonna need some protection, <laughs> especially in that situation. Uh -huh. And often, in lieu of hiring armed men, which can be quite expensive, criminals will turn to animals for protection. Now, usually it's a dog, a big one, a pit bull or a Rottweiler or what have you, but sometimes even that is a little bit outside of a criminal's means. Mm -hmm. Dog food is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So it's understandable that some frugal criminals out there would go for something a little less high maintenance. Maybe an attack animal that only needs a few nuts a day to stay in peak physical condition. Maybe a squirrel. Lots of protein in those nuts. Uh, anyways, this news out of Alabama this past week is that a man in Limestone County has done just that. He kept a squirrel as an attack animal for when things got too hot and he needed protection. And according to police, this was no normal attack squirrel. They've seen them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this attack squirrel was all hopped up on methamphetamine. Oh my God, a super soldier. A super squirrel. Uh, the discovery was made on Monday when police raided an apartment where they found methamphetamines, drug paraphernalia, ammunition, and body armor and arrested one of the apartment's residences. They also discovered a caged squirrel. And the cops say that before the raid, they'd received a tip letting them know that the apartment's other resident, Mickey Polk, who's now on the run, was using the squirrel to attack and feeding it meth to keep it aggressive. That's terrible. Yeah. Unconscionable. Lock him up. It's a pretty crazy thing to hear. Yeah. And so it soon became national news. When local news went around asking neighbors for their reaction to having lived so close to the meth squirrel, one said, quote, a squirrel on meth. That scares the fire out of me. Poor squirrel. What would you do if he had done your dog like that? Oh, goodness. He couldn't handle it. Another neighbor said, man, what an idiot. I wouldn't want to be around a squirrel that wasn't on meth, much less on meth. A squirrel's dangerous. On meth, I wouldn't want a part of that. Can you imagine what that sucker would look like? Crazy. It would eat you up. Do these people not know what squirrels are? <laughs> or are the squirrels here much larger than we're used to? I don't know. Uh, lastly, another neighbor simply said, Welcome to the South, man. We got squirrels on meth. That's the right answer. <laughs> that is the right answer right there. But yeah. like these people that are being interviewed, if they gave them that Reddit question of would you fight uh, one horse-sized squirrel or a hundred uh, squirrel-sized horses, they would just be like, I don't want to go anywhere near a squirrel. Yeah. Why are you putting Why different would numbers you ever, into this? I see a squirrel, I turn the fuck around. I, run, I don't even leave my house. I don't want any trouble, Mr. Squirrel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these, these reactions, aside from the not really understanding what a squirrel is, they're mostly understandable. I mean, drug use is one thing, but drugging an innocent little squirrel, that is animal abuse, sir. It is unconscionable. It's indefensible. It's the sign of a true sociopath. So they better catch that guy responsible for this and lock him the fuck up. Because mm -hmm. who's he going to drug next? My kids? A chipmunk? The smaller they a get, a cute little chipmunk, the, maybe the, a mouse. Smaller the animal, the more wily they are when you get them all hopped up. <laughs> you won't even see a chipmunk coming. Yeah. It's so fast if it's on meth. You just see a little, little streak, little streak in the corner of your eye, and then your jugglers popped up. Mm -hmm. You're dead. Uh, here's the thing, though. No one actually knows if the squirrel was on meth. When police raided the apartment, they found the squirrel in a cage with no drugs nearby. They understandably had no way to test whether it was on meth. So, seeing that it was in apparent good health. They just released it outdoors to, to scare the neighbors forever. <laughs> yeah. uh, in a video taken by police at the scene before releasing it, the squirrel does appear quite twitchy and defensive. In other words, it was acting like a squirrel. Uh -huh. One that is being captured by humans and then released. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, though, the squirrel's owner, Mickey Polk, does seem like he might be the kind of guy to give drugs to a squirrel based on his long rap sheet. In the last 18 years, Polk has been booked in the local jail 28 times for charges including robbery, burglary, receiving stolen property, domestic violence, reckless endangerment, and of course, various drug charges. Okay. And you can add illegally owning a wild animal to that rap sheet because it is in fact illegal to keep a squirrel as a pet in Alabama. But he was just my pet. They wouldn't let me rescue a dog down at the pound. Not with my rap sheet. So guess what? Went in the backyard and found the first mammal I could yeah. find. The whole world is the animal shelter, if you're patient. Mm -hmm. uh, again, though, we have absolutely no reason to actually believe that this squirrel was ever on meth, aside from the police claiming that they heard that from someone. Uh, to be fair, the idea of keeping a squirrel as an attack animal, it does make some sense, given how many hilarious examples there have been in the news over the years 
of squirrels just going ape shit on people and causing a disproportionate amount of chaos given how small they are. But squirrel owner and fugitive Mickey Polk has been making his case to whoever will listen that the messed up squirrel narrative from the police is just squirrel slander. They were best friends. They were. <laughs> While on the run, Polk has given interviews to local radio stations and TV news programs. He's spoken to the Washington Post, and he's posted video to his Facebook profile showing that despite the squirrel being released, it's since been reunited with its owner. Polk says that following the raid, he visited the area looking for his squirrel, whose name is Deez Nuts. Deez Nuts! <laughs> it's been a while since we've got to pull that one out. Yeah, but it's always good. Anyways, upon arrival, Deez Nuts jumped down from the tree he was hiding in and straight into Mickey Pock's arm. Yeah. So, this is a pet squirrel. It is. And I'm standing by the fact that because of his criminal past, he wasn't able to adopt an animal. That could be. Taking that man's squirrel. Anyways, according to Paul, uh, he, he and Deez, Deez Nuts, they have a very strong bond. Polk says that he's had Dee Nuts since the squirrel was basically a newborn. A local tree cutter had found Dee's, still with his umbilical cord attached, and brought him to Polk, whose previous pets included a raccoon and a tarantula. Polk adopted Dee's as a pet, nursing him with a tiny pet syringe every two hours, and literally saved his life. Yeah, he's got these pictures of him, like, feeding this, like, newborn squirrel with an eyedropper, like... I don't see how you can look at that and, and want to lock this man up. Now was Paul, He's a caretaker. They, they arrested someone. They but, arrested his old roommate. Okay, but did they have any reason to believe that he was still committing criminal acts? No. So maybe uh, this is a rehabilitation squirrel. I get the strong impression that, like, this guy obviously has had a long, rough life. And, and he finally found happy. Yeah, it seems like the... <laughs> The squirrel came into his life at the perfect time to, like, give some meaning and purpose to him. And then the fucking cops had to come and ruin it all. Well, at the very least, at least the cops did not shoot the squirrel in the face. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. However, they're like, hey, look, this squirrel, uh, we heard it was hopped up on meth and very dangerous. Let's just release him into the wild. That makes sense. He becomes the that alpha. That makes sense. The alpha squirrel. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, Polk there, he says that once Deez was mature and healthy, he trained him to use a litter box and to sleep in a hammock. Uh, he initially fed him just whatever was around, but Deez started having seizures, so he took him to a veterinarian who diagnosed Deez with a calcium deficiency. Polk then switched to a more vegetable-rich diet consisting of squash and cucumbers. He loves this fucking <laughs> thing! I, it's, it's breaking my heart now! I, yeah, 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 everyone saw the fucking headline, oh, this guy gave us... Squirrel meth. Like, oh, what a what a monster. Meanwhile, he's down at, like, the local Trader Joe's being like, picking up some cucumbers yeah. for, for Deez. Deez is going to love he's this. He's going to be, wait till I come through the door mm. with his new favorite snacks. Uh, Polk says he considers Deez Nuts to be his best friend. <laughs> and that Deez Nuts is more fun to hang out with than most people. I mean, that's true. Now, he does admit that Deez can be vicious and that he has bitten people. <laughs> saying, quote, he's sweet as he can be to me. With someone else, as long as they don't get too close, they're all right. They're territorial. You, you don't have to make them mean. Even when he was just a little bitty, tiny thing, he didn't even have all his teeth yet. He would bite other people. Well, yeah, I mean... It sounds like a squirrel. Yeah. I mean, that's what squirrels would do. So, I don't know. They're, they're, they're not very nice creatures. And that's also why they're illegal to own as pets. You just put some seeds out on the patio and, and yeah. you'll, you'll have lots of squirrel friends. Uh, so, anyways, upon being released by the cops... He probably wouldn't have survived too long if Polk hadn't returned to the crime scene be because he was brought up from birth. As yeah, he was like literally hours old when he was rescued. That's why they can't just toss all the orcas back into the ocean. Yeah. They gotta wait, wait for them to die in captivity. Doesn't work that way. Uh, anyways, this guy really seems to love this squirrel. His Facebook profile, it paints quite a different picture than what the cops are claiming in the media about Polk being an animal abuser. And as for the actual crimes he's accused of, Polk also dismisses the narrative around that. He says he used to live in that apartment, but moved out several weeks back to get away from that lifestyle. Because the damn squirrel... <laughs> the squirrel gave him a new sense of purpose. Like, I don't need to keep doing this drug shit. I don't need to keep hanging around with these criminals. I don't need that. I've got D's nuts. The squirrel that relies on me. We all rely on as each a other. Parent. I sleep on his back, and he yeah. leans right up back against me. <laughs> that way we don't sleep with our faces in the mud. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he'd been returning every day to move his possessions to his new place and check in on Dee's, and had been waiting to permanently move Dee's because uh, his new roommate, roommate was a cat owner. That Gotta obviously be careful about that, wouldn't yeah. be uh, a good combination. Uh, he says, therefore, charging him with drug possession is bullshit because it's not even his home. 
Yeah. For now, though, he's on the run from a drug charge that, in our opinion, shouldn't even be a criminal matter in a civil society. Not like they're accusing him of selling anything. Or, I, well, he does have a, a history of, like, beating people and burglary and stuff. But, like, this time, it was just drugs. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't go to prison for having drugs on you. I'm sorry. It's a stupid reason. Unless it's a boatload. Yeah. Literal boatload. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but this is Alabama we're talking about. It's, you know, you got to turn back the clock a bit. But uh, yeah, Paul has used his time as a fugitive to attempt to clear his name and undo the slander that the Limestone County Sheriff's Department has committed against him and his best friend, Deeth Nutt. He knows he can't run forever, though, so he says that he plans to return home and turn himself in once he's tied up some loose ends, visited some family, gotten himself a good attorney, and found a safe new home for D's nuts. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Make sure that squirrel is safe somewhere where the cops can't get near it. Yeah. As of Thursday, he told the Washington Post that D's had been dropped off with a trustworthy, licensed person with squirrel experience up in Tennessee where squirrel ownership is legal with a permit. Cool. So D's is in good hands. Mm-hmm. But that means he also crossed state lines as a fugitive, though. Probably can't do that. Bah. Anyways, he told the Post, I do miss him. I usually let him sleep somewhere near my bed. I do miss him hard. God, I'm gonna make me cry. Give this man his squirrel back. Based off everything we've seen from uh, his side of the story, you know what? We gotta believe him. Again, because not really that serious of a crime this time. Yeah. Squirrel seems to be improving his life. Yeah. It appears quite likely that what the police told the media about Mickey Polk owning a meth-addicted attack squirrel was a load of nonsense with no basis in reality that they knew would get picked up by every media outlet in the country despite it being based on nothing. Mickey Polk is no angel, but simple, you know, take, taking a simple drug possession case and turning it into a media circus centered around alleged animal abuse, kind of fucked up. Yeah. And we hope that once Mickey Polk has his day in court, he gets to set the record straight about all this and gets his damn squirrel back. But don't, they're going to be like, let's bring up D's, put him on the, put him on the, the stand. Don't do it. It's mm-hmm. a trick. Yes. He's not allowed in uh, Alabama. They'll fucking euthanize him. As soon as he crosses, crosses that border. Don't do it. In the meantime, as is tradition in this country, he's got a GoFundMe set up to help with legal expenses and squirrel expenses. So if you feel like helping this man and his squirrel deal with this bullshit, you can. I wish you the best, sir. Yeah. You know, we've all made mistakes in this life, but it seems like you were really trying to turn things around with your squirrel by your side. Let's, you know what, I'll say it on camera. Let's go to the computer after this and give him 20 bucks. Yeah, sure. All right. Coming your way. And before we get into the headlines part of the show, it's time to talk about this week's sponsors, starting with Quip. Brushing your teeth is one of those things that we've all just kind of, you have to do it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of us haven't been doing it properly this whole time. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, more affordable, and even enjoyable. Mm. You probably know you're supposed to be brushing twice daily for two straight minutes, but Quip takes all the guesswork out of that by giving you a vibrating pulse every 30 seconds to tell you to switch sides. You might also think that with electric toothbrushes, the more power, the better, but you'd be wrong. Quip gives you a nice gentle vibration because it turns out a lot of people brush too hard and a lot of electric toothbrushes, they're too abrasive. It's also got a nice little multi-use cover that mounts to your mirror when you're at home or turns into a travel case when you're on the go. I love that. Mm -hmm. And since the battery lasts three months on a single charge, you don't have to worry about charging at all. Quip even sends you new brush heads automatically every three months for just $5 because it turns out 75% of people are brushing with old, busted, worn out bristles that aren't very effective. I got my restock recently and I was just like, very easy. Boop, don't have to worry about it anymore. And once I started brushing them with the new one, I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, also, crazy cheap. Yeah. Yeah, weird. Uh, You've been making more money, Quip. Uh, Anyways, we both use Quip, obviously, and we love it. Uh, It's simple, it's effective, and it isn't a big old eyesore that some electric toothbrushes can be with cords hanging off. I don't even know where I'd put one of those big boys. But uh, don't take our word for it. Uh, They've also got the backing of 25,000 dental professionals and the ADA, the American Dental Association. Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash weeklyweird right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free with a Quip or electric toothbrush. Uh, that's, you know, your free first your first refill's free. It's even cheaper than cheap. Mm-hmm. Go to getquip.com slash weeklyweird. It's a good deal. Mm-hmm. Clean your mouth. And this episode is sponsored by DoorDash. Before you brush your teeth, you're going to want to eat, mm-hmm. so... Uh, Maybe you've had a long day at work, tough day at school, you're still stuck at the office. Time to treat yourself to the meal you deserve on demand from your favorite restaurants. Restaurants come to you with DoorDash. 
Ordering is easy. Just use the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and a Dasher will bring it to you anywhere you are. Not only is that burger place you love on DoorDash already, but over 310,000 other amazing restaurants are too. DoorDash connects you with door-to-door -door delivery in over 3,300 cities, all 50 states, and Canada. Order from your local go-tos or choose from your favorite chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and my parents' personal favorite, the beacon of Western civilization, Cheesecake Factory. You don't gotta show up in your nice button-down shirt and black shoes anymore. Just relax. And let culture come Taking to you. Taking the culture. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's like I'm in 10 countries at once. It's not the same without the book menu. Yeah. Uh, anyways, don't worry about dinner. Let dinner come to you with DoorDash. We get we use it all the time because uh, when we're editing and writing, time goes by like that and you forget to eat and you're like, ah, now I don't yeah. want to leave. Right now, our viewers can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code WEEKLYWEIRD, all one word. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store or wherever and enter promo code WEEKLYWEIRD. Again, that's promo code Weekly Weird for five dollars off your first order from DoorDash. Now let's move on to some headlines. Yeah. Starting with a, a handful of uh, animal-themed headlines, since we've, you know, we started the day off with D's nuts and squirrel. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about some more animals. Mutant porn star flees with huge penises set to invade Sheffield homes this summer. Uh. So this is like a fucked up uh, flea circus. They're coming to town. They're showing off their big flea dongs. Big flea. It's it's walking the tightrope straight out of a porn. You you and your your nuclear family at home, and then these big dick fleas come in, and your wife's like, "Oh my god!" And you're like cowering in the corner. You're like, "I guess I'll watch." But how you, are they going to? You get cucked. How are they going to walk or fly when they're dragging those big dongs around? Somehow they find a way. It's weird that they can migrate like this. Yeah, fleas in the summer though, it's terrible. My my dogs last year last year before we just got them like medicated for it, it was like every day I was scraping out like twenty Oof. fleas off their skin. It was fucked up. It was like how are these they, they lay like fifty and egg, eggs a day. Well, we've already these, they the men have big dicks. Yeah. They're just going around whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. Getting all the lady fleas pregnant. As we've already said, every fucking home or whatever in Los Angeles was built seventy years ago, so just you might as well leave the windows wide open. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we can look forward to the fact that in uh, 10,000, 20,000 years, every male species on Earth is going to be dragging giant dong because that's the way evolution's going, baby. Yeah, good. Look forward to it. <laughs> Moving on, seals have been taught to sing the Star Wars theme song. But Yeah, this is weird. I, I patiently await the nerds gatekeeping the seals from the Star Wars community. Um, uh, um, um, um. <laughs> <laughs> The male seals stop the female seals from singing along. Um, um, um. Uh, yeah, no, this is actually like they they figured out that this specific type of seal is the only other mammal that vocalizes using the same like mechanism as human beings. Mm -hmm. So they figured out if they start trying to teach them like how to sing and talk when they're young, like they can get them to do some pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> cool. So like. In a couple years, Mary Sue. Yeah, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have seals like really fucking gatekeeping Star Wars. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have talking seals. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear all the things that they have to say. Well, actually, <laughs> as he balances a ball on his nose. Uh, uh, moving on. Gorilla accused of swallowing money worth eighteen thousand dollars from zoo in Nigeria. He is the Where true, did he get a hold of it? He's the true Nigerian prince. Yeah. Uh, he didn't. They're blaming the gorilla for a crime that humans committed here, almost certainly. Like, the easiest way to launder money is put it through an animal. Yeah, basically like at this zoo, a bunch of money they'd been setting aside for like some holiday season just like vanished. And they're like, oh, I guess it was probably, the gorilla probably like went in the office and probably ate it. Why? Probably no point in even looking for it. It's like in his shit now. Well, Steve, why don't you go get the gloves on and start digging through that shit to prove your point? Ah, you'll never find it. No, I think yeah, it's, uh, I think the money's just gone. The it's real sad. The excrement is clearly in the pen because that's the only where he that's the only place he can go. Oh jeez, you know, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> it's fucked up. Leave the gorilla alone. He didn't do anything. Why would a gorilla eat money? That much money? Why? If a gorilla was, we've seen how gorillas work. If they manage to get out of their enclosures, they don't turn back. They keep they they. 
They don't stop until they're shot dead. Mm -hmm. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. Why would he go into the office, eat a bunch of money, and then sneak back into his cage? Walks in, like sees the gorilla eating all the money, and goes, "Ah, oh, jeez, oh no, <laughs> no one will oh, believe me." Please, you gotta do me a solid. At least get back in your pen. I can't lose all this money <laughs> and a gorilla on my shift. And the gorilla was like, "All right, all right, fine. Don't cry. Yeah, don't shoot me. I heard what happened. Don't to shoot Harambe. me like those gorillas over in America. Don't send me to Cincinnati for the love of God, no." <laughs> uh, it's probably one of Harambe's family members. All the all the gorillas in captivity are like related. Mm-hmm. I remember the family, the, the Harambe family tree. Yeah, it's wild. Could be. Massive Australian huntsman spider eats a possum in terrified tourist hotel room. It's a very large spider. Well, it has to be if it's gonna eat a possum. Well, so it's the Australian possum, and oh. it's like the pygmy possum. It was, it was like the size of a mouse. Okay. But this spider is still gigantic, yeah. and it's eating it while like hanging off the side of a wall. It's too much. Do they, do they attack humans? Is there anything to be scared of? I'm sure if it's in Australia, you just don't want to be around it, but... Apparently this one, like, as big and scary as it is, it's not that venomous. Yeah. Like, the, the bites the small hurt, but, like, they, you know, you, you avoid them pretty much good. It's it's the small the small spiders and the, the snakes that you got to worry about. And, These and, guys and are, multiple other things. Yeah, and just, yeah, just all sorts of various ways to accidentally die for very stupid reasons. Well, at least they're in a hotel room in Australia, not the Dominican Republic. Because, holy fuck, like 10 people have died in two weeks. From what? They think it's because of this uh, uh, pesticide. Wow. Anyways, a lot of people dying. Like, a lot. It's weird. Ugh. But I get all my news from, like, Info, Info uh, America, Info best number one, dot com. Uh. Yeah. No, this is all over the actual news. Well, yeah, it's fucked up. I mm-hmm. guess uh, maybe don't go to the Dominican Republic until they got that sorted out. Cancel your plans. Man arrested at JFK airport after 34 live birds in hair curlers found in case. Gossiping the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's, that's what I pictured. I was like, what would a bird even look like if you curled their feathers? But that's not no, actually. They were hiding inside the tubes. Yeah, they were little like finches in the tubes. Yeah. He was like, just trying to smuggle them. Yeah. He was trying to smuggle them from like Guyana into New York City so he could sell them at a profit to the local like bird singing competitive community because like <laughs> they have bird singing contests in new york city and like some communities there the cops and are like they got we got a big bird singing yeah. this weekend we got to go lock down jfk well supposedly the south american birds have better singing voices so they're very sought after yeah. um it's like the olympics and then like once you're in the game with a, a good south american singing bird and they win a competition like you can stud them. You can stud them for like a shitload of money. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole thing. Well, how much are those birds worth? Did it say? It said a good one could be like five grand. Damn, and he got thirty four of them. Yeah, hell, I'd smuggle these things too. Yeah, he, it was it was in his carry on. That's the boldest part. And they're singing birds. Did, yeah, did they get caught because they were singing. I don't know. It's, it's fucking brave. Yeah. Very bold of him. And they were like, "Sir, do you have birds in there?" He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> You got me. Yeah, I mean, I'm no diabolical criminal. You got uh, me. Let me explain. Yeah, what you have to do if you bring singing birds in is you just like leave your phone in the case with it, but like have them volume all the way up on like a podcast, but then have your headphones on so people just think that you forgot to actually connect your phone and you're just zoning out because people are they're just way too polite to ever say anything. Yeah. So you could just get through with that. Maybe. You're like hey, fucking idiot playing a podcast without even listening to it. Playing he a stupid know. bird podcast. <laughs> what a moron. Boston Animal Hospital finds 19 baby pacifiers in dog's stomach. Wicked. So uh, where's 19 dead babies? Uh, a lot of cold Steve, cases. Steve, go dig through that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get your gloves on. It's like the knife in the cro- or the alligator's head. It's like, where, where's the body? Yeah. Uh, well, so yeah, this, this fucking terrier. Where'd you, where'd you hide him? I mean... Who knows? People probably thought What's it was your really, body count? probably really cute to put the pacifier in the dog's mouth, and then it kept eating him. But they're like, "Damn it! I was trying to get a picture. Yeah, I can't get my Instagram before this dog ends up swallowing." Well, at least things. he'll shit it out. But no, didn't shit it out. Blockage. No. Russell Crowe got drunk and bought a dinosaur head from Leonardo DiCaprio. They're just like us. They are celebrities. They're just like all of us. He said he was at Leo's house. Leo was like, "Check out this dinosaur skull. Isn't it awesome?" Russell Crowe's like, "Yeah, I'd, I'd like to buy that skull." 
Leo's like, well, actually, I found an even cooler one on like rich people eBay that only rich people are allowed to use. So I'm probably gonna get that one and sell this one. Russell Crowe's like, how much? He's like, oh, I'll just sell it for what what I paid for it, uh, thirty five thousand dollars. And Russell's like, cool. I'm gonna put it in my kid's playroom. So he did, but then he got divorced and he had to sell everything in that weird auction where he sold like. Who got the dinosaur head? Uh, someone bought it from Russell Crowe. I don't know. I mean, I know it's a lot of money, but I figured a dinosaur head would be more than that. How big was it? Not I'm a like, very big one. Oh, I was thinking like a Tyrannosaurus head. No, no, no hmm. not that big. I think you know, I, it's it's really just something to see that Leonardo DiCaprio is so concerned with climate change, yet yet reaps the rewards of prehistoric climate change. Really makes you think. Maybe he just uses that as a reminder. Yeah. That could be me. Yeah, that's that'll be us someday if we don't do something about this. Some actor's gonna be trading my head around. We need to stop this climate change. Uh, also, though, girlfriend, you just turned 25, so get the fuck out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Find me a new one. <laughs> Shocking number of young people don't wear deodorant. Justin Bieber wants to change that. Well, at least he's doing something positive, I guess. Well, he's not when, when he's not fighting Tom Cruise. Yeah, well, you work up quite a sweat trying to fight Tom Cruise. This poll, the, like, it's, it says something like 40% of people 18 to 35 don't use deodorant. I find that difficult to believe. I feel like I would have smelled that by now. That's a lot. I mean, of we've people. all been to Comic Con. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't believe it though. I, I don't know if you're if you're in that age group. Let us know. And well, tell us the truth. Unlike the people in that poll, maybe it's because like uh, people are becoming more uh, less active. I guess I would say you and, still start to. But stick. that's the thing is like they don't think that they do because they're not really doing anything. Ugh. So I don't know. But at least Justin Bieber is on the case. Why is this a a point for him? Did he that at his concerts? Is he like, God, oh, you guys stink? No, he's just like. Agreeing to be the spokesman for some deodorant company? Oh, pfft. oh, whatever. It's like I don't like. I don't think anyone likes Bieber enough to like listen to what he says. I feel like this might make even fewer yeah, people who, use deodorant. Who are his fans now? Thirty-year-old women? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like who? Is, who loves Justin Bieber? Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna listen to him? Uh, like and, and take advice? Yeah, it's real. It's real weird. I want to see like what his fandom. Like who's buying his albums or whatever. It's got to be like, like Twilight Moms. Yeah, yeah, that's probably exactly who it is. So maybe he's trying to get them to put some deodorant on their kids. We'll see. Yeah, when best. you spend all your time reading romantic novels based on uh, werewolves and shit, you don't really have time to make sure your kids don't stink. True. Woman named Marijuana Pepsi earns PhD with dissertation on uncommon names. People always said I'd grow up to either be cannabis or a soft drink, and I showed them. This was trending on Twitter, and I was like, oh shit, oh baby, we're getting They're weed doing it. soda. But no, it's just this woman whose name is Marijuana Pepsi. Well, good for uh, her. Yeah, she, she really showed everyone. She, uh, she's got her fucking PhD. Do you think she'll change her name after she got the No, PhD? she's like proud of it. Good. She said like she- Well, she'd go by Mary. Nah, she's marijuana. She makes people call her marijuana? Marijuana Pepsi. I, and like, I saw on Twitter, people were like, this lady was also like a real estate agent for a while somewhere. And so- You would imagine her, it'd be hard to get clients. Her name was on the posters. I don't know, she's made it work, I guess. I mean, like I said, fucking great for her. This <laughs> yeah. is amazing. And and even better that she's like completely taking control of it, knowing yeah. it. She's marijuana Pepsi. I'd be going by like Mary. If you Pe got a problem with it? That's Mary your Pep. problem. Mary Pep. It's great. Mary Peppy. <laughs> a bunch it's of me and Mary Peppy. Hey, I wish I could marry Peppy. That, that cute little frog that never got into any trouble. That innocent young frog. Brother walks through front door after sisters take man they thought was him off life support. Why does this keep happening? Yeah, this exact same thing happened less than a year ago. Yeah. The, the one last year was in New York. This one is in, in Chicago. And uh, yeah. Just like, plug it back in. Basically, like the cops, they find some like half dead guy. They don't take fingerprints or anything. They're just like, ah, he looks kind of like this mugshot. So call the family, let them know to come down. Sisters come down. They can't recognize him because he's all fucking beat to Yep, a that's him. Yeah. They're like, well, everyone, they told us it was him. So that's our, that's our brother. But and again, like I think we said last time, it's kind of fucked up that your family just took you immediately off life support. Again, yeah, that's that's uh, they're gonna have to deal with that now. Awkward Christmas. Very, very for awkward. For both families. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're alive. What do you mean? Oh, well, we just 
Nothing. We, we thought we took you off life support. You did what? No, we're joking. We didn't. We didn't, we didn't do, do it. Don't read the news. Yeah, uh, I think that the one from last year, they they sued the hospital. I don't know if yeah, anything good. ever came out of it. So maybe these these people should find out who that lawyer was. Because <laughs> yeah, it's uh, probably some unnecessary uh, some unnecessary stress. Well, yeah. <laughs> from that. Also, you we said this last time. You now took someone's life because, and it's someone that. You well, you thought you had an emotional connection to it, and you're like, all yeah. right, time to let him go. And then it turns out that you killed someone else's <laughs> like kid, brother, you killed or someone. father, yeah. or whatever. You killed someone you didn't even know. Some kid's gonna That's knock gonna in fuck door. with you. I heard you know my daddy. No, he's dead. We no, killed him. We killed him. Yes. We didn't know it was him though, so it's fine. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, biggest news this week. O.J. Simpson is now on Twitter and says he's got a little getting even to do. And wasn't it like right after the 25th anniversary of him killing his wife? Uh, it was like right, yeah, it was right around there. Um, he hasn't posted a lot, says he's still like getting used to it. Um, he's made like three posts. He, he's not, he, he did father the, the Jenner girl. Yeah, he made, he made uh, one post, a video of him dedicated to dispelling the myth that he's Khloe Kardashian's dad. He's like, yeah. I wasn't even attracted to Kris Jenner. I wouldn't have never. Gross. I would have never fucked her in a million. He didn't say it like that, but it was it was a weird thing to say. And he's just like, I'm so proud of those girls, and I'm sure they were just like, cool. Uh, Thanks. Please, please uh, don't remind the world that you used to be like a extended member of our family. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he, he's been posting a lot about a uh, fantasy football and like who his picks are. So I mean, that, everyone's getting a lot of fun. I guarantee you, like within a year, he's gonna have a fucking video about how he believes the Earth is flat. Oh yeah. Wait till OJ gets radicalized by the internet. Well, there was someone else was like, it was like, well, how long do you think it's going to take till OJ says something nice about Trump and then Trump retweets him? It was like, very cool, OJ. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah. In this article, the, his like longtime like attorney guy was like, yeah, he's really excited about it. He's not going to talk about the whole L.A. thing. He, he just wants to focus on, you know, the positive stuff. Yeah, he's putting that behind him. The L.A. thing. Yeah. Ah, I don't really want to talk about the L.A. thing. Which thing? Ah, the thing, the trial of the century. Have you guys been, it's been, I, I, I entered into YouTube.com some, some very innocuous queries and turns out the world is flat. Yeah. Guys, I was in jail for like six years. I did a little bit of research. Yeah. Though I only had the books people would send to me, so. No, no, no. <laughs> no, me and Nicole never, never gave our kids those shots. No. No. No, no vaccinations no, for our kids. No, The juice doesn't need vaccines. They gave me vaccines and look what happened. I mean, no. Wait, I, yeah, I, what? I didn't do anything. <laughs> and uh, final headline, Hong Kong porn sites shut down and urge users to join the protest. There was like three million people or two and a half million people in the protests in Hong Kong. And it, the, the protests are for uh, well, like, because, so, the extraditions to mainland yeah, China. And Hong Kong uh, has maintained its old legal system since its integration with China. And the Hong Kong legal system is well, obviously like they have porn sites in Hong Kong. Porn is completely fucking illegal in mainland China. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, yeah, so previously it was like, if you broke the law in Hong Kong, you'd go through the Hong Kong legal system and go to jail in Hong Kong if convicted, and it was not that big of a deal. And now mainland, like Beijing is basically trying to make it so uh, if you commit a crime in Hong Kong, you get extradited to mainland China, where you might just disappear for fucking ever. Mm-hmm. And uh, understandably, the people of Hong Kong are not, not too keen on this. So uh, they've been out there protesting, and uh, it's actually kind of working. Yeah, they've the, made the government like back the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've won. They've won the small battle. But yeah, uh, it's just like this. Is this gonna go into another Tiananmen Square moment where like it gains critical mass, and then they're just like, all right, just kill them all, pretend nothing ever happened. I hope not. Yeah, you uh, would. You would hope. A lot more cameras these days, though. Yeah. So harder to do that. I think they'll just wear them down. Be like, you can't go out and march every day, and we're gonna make this happen one way or another. Yeah. They yeah. keep downplaying, like, <laughs> the number of protesters. The police were like, no. there was like six protesters there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a big deal. Not a lot of people feel this way. Yeah. But we're, yeah, we're gonna change a little bit, a few things because the six people asked. But no one else is really asking for this. Everyone yeah. else is actually fine with it, but we're still, you know, we might change it a little bit. Mm hmm. What they need to do is get uh, uh, street-level camouflage above the protesters, so it looks like the streets are empty. If you uh, have like a like a drone or a surveillance plane, there's nobody out. They're all at home enjoying their lives. Yeah, enjoying their lives in the the People's Republic, baby. Mm-hmm. 
taking it right on St. George Avenue in mm. Hong Kong. Yeah. All the street names are British. I want to go before it goes to hell. It's going to happen. So I guess I better go soon. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that's, <laughs> that's it for Weekly Weird News this week. A very animal-filled episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, stay tuned in the future for uh, gatekeeping uh, seals and... Well, 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 actually, <laughs> debate me. <laughs> debate, debate me, debate me, debate me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. It's uh, not ableist. I'm doing a fucking seal impression. It's a seal. What did you think I was doing? Anyways, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, if you want to check out our exclusive podcast from this week or the one that's coming up uh, next Monday, be sure to go to the Patreon page. Become a patron. You'll get access to all of those podcasts that are exclusive for those people. We talked members. way more about OJ. Yeah, we did. On the podcast. Yeah. Or you can uh, join uh, our YouTube channel by clicking the Join button below. And uh, you'll also see it in the Community tab there. Uh, in the meantime, check out our other videos from this week. We have a brand new episode of News Dump and, uh, and also an episode of Tech News Day that you should check out. Watch both of those, and we'll see you next week. I think we're doing a, a stream next week, a video game stream. So keep an eye out for that. Stay tuned. Bye.